Hey ladies, I'm back with part three of my three part video of my journey of finding out I was pregnant with my daughter to my pregnancy and now this video which is my labor and delivery and recovery story. Um, so I left off in my last video the one we arrived at the hospital which was February 8th. Um, we arrived at the hospital February 8th, 2011 at around 5 30 a.m. they brought me up to my room um, I had to give a urine sample as usual um, I got undressed into the, my lovely hospital gown and then they came in they took blood they put my IV in and then the doctor came in and broke my water that is a feeling in itself I had that's when everything hit me that this was actually that I was actually gonna have a baby they laid me back to, to, to break my water and I had my fiance on one side my best friend wanted to be up on my legs because um, she's she's in nursing school so she wanted to see everything and which was fine I didn't care at that point I'd rather her be down there than and him be up here um, so I just was looking at him and I was crying saying that I don't want to do this anymore, I can't do this, I'm not doing this. And the nurse was laughing and she's like, you kind of have no choice now. And I'm like, no, this baby is staying in me, I'm not having a baby. I was so scared. And this was around 6.30 they broke my water. And they started the Pitocin, which is, if you don't know, is a drug to induce labor. Um, and then... Around 7.30, the anesthesiologist came in. I wasn't even, I was still two centimeters. Um, I didn't dilate at all from when I was checked at 35 weeks to 37 weeks. I was at about two, two and a half centimeters. And I thought that you couldn't get a, an epidural unless you were at least four centimeters. So if anyone knows the laws in Florida, if there is a law about that, um, my doctor wasn't in the, he went to his office. So I don't know what happened with that but the anesthesiologist came in at around 7 30 a quarter to eight and asked me if i wanted my epidural i didn't because i did my research about pitocin the night before i knew that the epidural will slow down the pitocin i did not want a c-section baby was head down um, my doctor told me that he would try for me to have a vaginal birth um unless things got complicated then we would resort to a c-section he knew my birth plan was to have a you know a vaginal delivery i didn't want a c-section and i couldn't understand why he, the anesthesiologist came in at you know so early i wasn't in any pain um i was comfortable i mean i had to have the monitors put internally because i'm plus size they wanted to make sure they got a good reading of baby's heartbeat so I couldn't understand why they were they came so early and I just kept saying no I don't want it yet and my fiance was scared you know he's never been through that either and he's like I don't want to see you in pain are you sure and my best friend was like Megan get the epidural she's she doesn't like pain either so she was like just get the epidural get the epidural and I'm like no I don't want it I don't want it and they just kept telling me I think they wanted to get it done with because I'm plus size. They thought maybe they would have a problem getting it in. Um, so they wanted to give it, you know, give it to me then when it wasn't so busy yet. Um, I think that may be the reason why. Um, but finally, I was just so upset that I was like, you know what, fine, whatever. The nurse was doing the same thing. They, the anesthesiologist kept saying, well, you know, if you're in a lot of pain, come in a couple hours. I might not be able to get to you. I have a lot, there's a lot of C-sections planned today. Just all this stuff to scare me. And I didn't like it at all. That was probably the worst part of my whole labor and delivery was that part. Um, and I just cried and cried. I was like, all right, fine. And I always watched on TV how the husbands and boyfriends and mothers and friends, you know, stayed in the room when you got your epidural. Well, they made them leave. It was just me and the nurse. And I was shaking. I was petrified. I was so scared that they were going to paralyze me and I wouldn't be able to walk or hold my baby. And I was just upset. I was crying. The nurse that I had was amazing. The one nurse. Um, she was an older nurse. And I think that may be why she was so great. Um, she wasn't the young girl that was like right out of nursing school or something. Um, that was trying to, that was pushing me to get the epidural. 
Um, and she was so nice to me. She was just like, just tell me about your baby. Do you know what it is? Like getting my mind off of that I was getting a giant needle stuck in my back. Um, the epidural, the needle for them to numb my back hurt more than the epidural. Um, I can tell you that probably because I was numbed. Um, the feeling that they, I didn't move, but I, I went like that when they put it in. The feeling that you get when they put the epidural in have you ever, this is the only thing I can think of to explain it, have you ever had someone come up to you with like those shock pens or like the hand thing, you shake their hand and it buzzes you? That is exactly what it felt like going through my body, which made me jump because I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be pain. I was ready for pain. And um, sorry for the lighting adjustment once again. Um, I look like a ghost with this lighting, but... Um, it doesn't matter. Um, but I don't know. So, um, they went, when they, when they sent for that, when they sent for the epidural, so I asked you to do the epidural, my fiance and my best friend went down to the cafeteria to get something to eat. I couldn't eat anything. They didn't want to eat in front of me and bring it back up. So they stayed down there to eat for a little while, which allowed me to rest after they put the epidural in. Um, everything went completely numb. I couldn't feel anything. My legs felt so heavy and numb. Oh, it was horrible. They wanted me to lay on my left side, but halfway through my pregnancy, I told you in my part one video how I had problem, like my legs hurt really bad. Towards the end of my pregnancy, they tell you to lay on your left side that it's better for the baby, but every time I laid on the left side, my whole leg would go numb. So they kept putting me on my left side and I kept telling them it was uncomfortable. They had to come in and adjust me because I couldn't move. I couldn't turn myself and that that scared me. Um, my mom finally showed up around nine o'clock. The epidural gave me chills. I was shaking, um, like uncontrollably. I couldn't control it, which scared my friend. This was right before she left. Um, scared her. Um, she was like, I'm never having a baby. This is scary. Like I was freaking her out from it. Um, I keep saying, um, I have to stop. But so that was that. I had the chills. Um, I ended up getting sick once. Um, right after she left, I got sick. My mom, you know, held everything for me. My fiance was up the entire, he let me, the we didn't get that much sleep, but the sleep that we did get, he stayed up the entire night. He didn't sleep at all. So while the, you know, while my mom was there, I told him to lay down, take a nap. So he slept for a little while. Um, and then my epidural wore off around, I would say around one o'clock. Um, my friend came back to the hospital before, before she had to go to work. And my epidural completely wore off. They came in, they pushed some type of medication, which helped. But everything wore off. Like, I was in so much pain. Um, I kept feeling pressure. I kept telling them I had to push. I was only at three and a half centimeters. By, from, I went from two and a half to three and a half. From 7 a.m. to about 3 p.m. So I wasn't dilating. Every time the baby... Um, move down I her her heartbeat would drop which made me like her heart rate would drop which made me very very nervous I kept pressing the button my mom was freaking out um, they said that's normal when they move down as long as it goes right back up she's like that's why we we didn't come in like we can see all your you know your stats and everything on the monitors outside I was like okay let me feel a little bit better that they can see everything and my mom was just talking to me. They went and got lunch. Um, well, they went at separate times. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then at around 5 o'clock, I kept telling them I have to push. Like, there's so much pressure. I have to push. I have to push. I should have told them to shut my Pitocin off around 3 o'clock or to shut my epidural off completely since I wasn't feeling it anyway to allow the Pitocin to work. Cause I do feel that if I did that, I probably would have, um, I ended up with a C-section, but I'll get to that in a minute. But I feel that if I would have told them to wait on the epidural or to, you know, lower the epidural, shut the epidural off for a little while to get the Pitocin running, you know, cause it, that does slow your labor, but I would have been able to deliver vaginally. Um, and I think, um, so after that, I, um, they came and they gave me a different medicine in my IV to help with the pain. It didn't really do anything. Um, like I said, around 5 o'clock, I kept feeling like I had to push. 
with every contraction. My contractions were two to two minutes apart, not even um, back to back. Like they, there was no break in between. Um, so the nurse came in, checked me. I was only four. I was only five centimeters. So I was in labor for about 12 hours and my doctor came in to check on me and he said, you know, your pressure is rising. It was fine when it came in, but my pressure kept rising, which I think was because of my pain. I don't think there was anything wrong with me. Um, but the doctor told me that to be safe and to make sure that, you know, baby is healthy and that I'm healthy to have a C-section. I started crying. I didn't want the C-section, but I knew that, you know, if he's telling me to keep your baby safe, then I was like, okay, fine, let's just do it. So they started prepping me at around 6-ish. I think I believe I got in the ER, the ER, the OR around 6.30. Um, the anesthesiologists already had the epidural in. They didn't, all they had to do was give me a different medication for the, spi um, the spinal tap. Um, my fiance went to get in his gear. Um, my best friend was at work, so I really wanted her in the room, but she couldn't, she had to work. My mom didn't want to go in the room. She's very squeamish, so I knew that she wouldn't be able to sit there with me. So it was just me and my fiance, which was nice. Um, my battery's dying, so I want to get this wrapped up quickly. Um, so my, so they, so he came, they started to cut, like, after they prepped me, whatever, getting ready, they started to cut me. And I was like, no, my fiance's not in here. Like, go get him. Like, the nurse forgot to go get him to come in. So, they, he came and sat with me. And we didn't say one word to each other. We were just looking at each other because I was petrified. He was petrified. He kept looking around the curtain to see what was going on. And then they told me that I would feel a lot of pressure and to hold my breath. So, I did. And the baby came out. The baby was not crying when she came out, which they let me know that she was a girl right away. And I just looked at him and I was like, I knew it. I just had that feeling the whole time that it was a girl. Um, so I went. So that happened. And finally she started crying. I was like, oh, thank God. They brought her over to me. And I just started crying. Um, I'm going to try and keep myself together. Um, I just started crying. She was, she was so beautiful. I couldn't believe that this tiny human was growing inside of me that I grew this child, you know, with, you know, obviously my fiance helps, you know, whatever, but I grew that baby for 37 weeks for nine months. I grew that baby inside my belly and I just couldn't believe it. And I was in total shock and they took a couple of pictures of us, you know, with the baby and they told Josh to, you know, to go up to the nursery and that I would be fine. I said, you know, go with her. I don't, you know, I'm fine. Go with her. Um, he went up to the nursery, they started sewing me up, and I lost it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the anesthesiologist told me I was the funniest person he's ever seen um, during a C-section. And I kept, I kept saying to him, I'm like, I, the guy, I think, he, I don't even remember what his name was. I think it was Nick. Like, he told me to call him by his first name, and I just kept saying to him, I'm going to the light. I'm going to die. I can't breathe. I'm going to the light. I'm like, I see Jesus. Like, I'm to the light. He's like, Megan, you're fine. Your stats are fine don't worry about a thing okay fine finally got out of recovery I got out of the, the operating room went to recovery about 20 minutes later my fiance came back down into recovery um showed me pictures of her and they put like these things on my legs um for circulation purposes I guess like it vibrated it was funny but um I was in recovery for about an hour and then they brought me up to Lay back up to labor and delivery, but in like the recovery part of the wing, um, where you go after you have your baby. Um, I had a room to myself, which I was very, very thankful for. Uh, my mom was there. My brother was there. They still had the baby in the nursery. They didn't bring her to me right away, which I'm not sure why. Um, but visiting hours ended. My mom said that, you know, she'd be back in the morning to give us... She got to see her in the glass and stuff. And I, I didn't see her since she was born. So my mom was like, you know, I want to give you and Josh, you know, time with your daughter and things like that. So they, um, so after that, they left me and Josh alone. Um, I got very sick 
after the c-section when I was back up on uh, you know in my room and it hurt so much like the pain every my spinal tap you know wore off and I was in so much pain and I had to throw up but every time I had like that motion to throw up it hurt so I couldn't throw up I was so sick they finally came in and gave me a pain like injection like pain medicine injection in my thigh which helped and then around 10 o'clock they finally brought Brianna into me and I was able to hold her for the first time and sorry it was the most amazing feeling and I pray and wish all the time that all my TT sisters get to feel that feeling I know I've only been trying for three months but there's girls out there that or women I should say that have been trying for a hell of a lot longer than I that I have right now and that feeling of you holding your child for the first time is the most amazing feeling that you could ever feel and I pray and wish that every single TT sister of mine gets to feel that soon. Um, but it was just amazing and seeing my fiance hold her for the first time, the feeling that you get seeing your significant other hold your child for the first time, you fall in love with them all over again and it's the most amazing feeling. Um, so that was that and my hospital stay was okay. I, um, I'm trying to pull myself together. Sorry. My hospital stay was okay. They had me up and walking. My doctor told me when he came in after C-section, he wanted me in bed for at least 12 hours, um, or more, a little bit more, like 14, 15 hours. And the nurse came in at 3.30 in the morning, waking me up to go walking around. And I was like, no, he told me you know, 12 hours, she's like, no, that's not what it says, blah, 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 whatever. I hated my night nurse. Um, and, oh, she was born at 6.58 p.m., by the way, and she was 6 pounds, 8 ounces, 19 and a half inches long when she was born. Forgot to add that in there. Um, so, I don't know if I can see, my battery's gonna die. Um, but anyway, so, I was there for, th I had birth. I gave birth Tuesday. I was discharged Friday. Um, I had a problem um, going to the bathroom, urinating um, there. They gave me a shot in my IV, which got me to go to the bathroom, which was fine. But, uh, you know, so my recovery was pretty hard. I wasn't prepared for that amount of pain. They ended up using staples on me. So my staple stayed in when I left the hospital. Um, she had a little bit of jaundice when she was born. So I had to come back to the hospital that Sunday. We went home Friday. And then sun Saturday was just a day at the house. I was in so much pain. My legs swelled up so bad. Um, I couldn't shower by myself. I couldn't get in and out of the bath tub by myself I couldn't get um, in a, in and out of bed by myself my fiance for like seriously oh thank God for him he did everything for the first week until my staples came out because I couldn't move um, I did a little bit like I fed her when I can um, I planned on breathing with the amount of pain that I was in and the I couldn't move I just gave up which I wish I didn't. I'm planning since I now I know what to expect from a C-section, so I will most likely have to have one again. I know what to expect the second time, so I plan on breastfeeding baby number two. Um, but I think once my staples came out, I was able to move around more. Um, my incision didn't get infected. It was very easy to keep up with. Um, and overall, I had a very good recovery. My doctor said I was healing up nicely. At my, I went after two weeks, well, a week when I got my staples out. He said everything was healing fine, just to keep everything dry, because um, I have a bee belly. If you don't know what that is, um, I will link an article to it below. Um, plus size bee bellies. Um, so that, you know, I kept my my incision dry, and once I got those staples out, I was 
moving around a lot more. I was able to get in and out of bed by myself. Um, I stopped my pain meds around then. Um, and I was swollen very, very bad um, for about two to three weeks. Almost a month um, is when the swelling finally went down. But overall, I had a very good recovery. Um, just the beginning was a little rocky with the pain. But overall, with the way I recovered, I recovered in about six weeks um, from my C-section, which is normal. It's around six to eight weeks. Um, I did recover very well. Um, my scar is very tiny. I have any problems in that area. So everything is fine um, now, as far as I know. Um, but that was my story. I'm sorry that these videos are so long. Um, I hope that it helped somebody in some way. If you have any other questions for me, um, please leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, ladies.